Good morning. It's a beautiful day that the Lord's given us. I trust you'll rejoice and be glad in it. We've got an item of prayer. If you haven't already heard, uh, we're back to square one with the virus. Only out of an abundance of caution. If you haven't heard, the pastor was exposed to someone with uh, COVID-19. So uh, taking precaution, canceling the uh, live church service. It's good that you're on live vision this morning. Uh, don't forget to tune in following the Sunday school at 11 for the worship service. Pray for the pastor, Sister Janet. Pastor will be tested this week, so we'll know. Keep him in your prayers. Keep one another in your prayers. And I trust that you're praying one for another this morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, just another day that we can uh, serve you. Lord, it's another opportunity. And I pray as these opportunities come our way that we'll let our light shine, that people might see Christ in us and desire to have him. Bless mightily this morning in the Sunday school hour, in the preaching hour, even though it's on live view, Lord, just do a mighty work through your spirit. Thank you for all you do for us and watching over us these last few months. Lord, thank you. And I pray for my country. Lord, you know the situation. Lord, I pray that you would intervene, not only take away this virus, but take away the hate that's going across our country. Lord, thank you for America. Thank you that you allowed me to be born and raised here. Lord, help us to do our part just to glorify your name in it. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank Brother Steve for last week uh, filling in. And Brother Steve will be back in the next two weeks. Uh, Lord willing, I'll be going out of town. So you, you please give Brother Steve uh, uh, your attention. Uh, an able teacher he is. Uh, I appreciate uh, him a lot. So don't forget next Sunday, Brother Steve, next couple Sundays. We're living in some really unusual terms, times, and that's putting it mildly. Not one of us thought going into January 1st, 2000, or 2020, that we would be here today. We've gone through a lot in the last three months. Uh, we've taken away from church. Even when we were allowed to come back in numbers dividing 9 and 11, it still wasn't the same. Uh, the close fellowship was missing and a lot of people have not come back I, I, I get concerned I pray for our church family I pray for you daily that you're, you're doing the right thing but sometimes when you get away from church it's easy to slip back into the old man that uh, Paul talks about in Romans but during these times it should draw us closer to him and today I want to give a, a, a short lesson uh, to that effect now some might say when it's finished that I was preaching uh, but there is a fine line between teaching and preaching this morning for just a few minutes I want to talk about Christ our example you see he is our example in the gospel according to John, chapter 13, verse 15. Now he says, For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Now I know for you Bible scholars, this comes on the, uh, the end of his foot washing. Now we, we Baptists, we don't practice foot washing, but if your feet, feet are real dirty and you can't do it, uh, I'll send Brother Robbins over uh, later on. But other verses also talk about him as an example to us in 
1 Peter 2.21, he says, For even unto hereunto ye are called, but Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. I, I want to talk about for a few moments seven things that we should have as an example of the Lord Jesus Christ in our walk every day. Every Christian, every Christian, I'm going to repeat it again, every Christian should have these seven things that I'm going to mention this morning as an example of Christ's likeness that's, that's in us, that should be in us. You see, they, we were called Christians. Christians. It, it translates Christ-like. That means just as Christ did, we are to do. And the first thing I find in, in being Christ-like is our faith. Hebrews chapter 12, uh, you can turn there, write it down, turn later, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now listen to this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The author and finisher of our faith. Looking to Jesus. The idea of looking has the idea of fixing our eyes upon Jesus. Fellas, remember when you first saw your wife, how beautiful she looked and you couldn't take your eyes off of her? That's the way it should be every day with Jesus. I told a story quite some time ago, and I won't repeat it this morning because of time, about uh, hunting dogs. All it takes is one hunting dog to see the rabbit, and that dog takes off after the rabbit. And because of all the confusion, all the other dogs will join in. But if those dogs have not seen the rabbit, they'll soon fall off. Only the dog that saw the rabbit will continue the chase. My friend, this is what it's talking about here. We need to fix our eyes upon Jesus <coughs> excuse me, and follow him for our faith. Now, it's not always easy. It's not always easy to walk with God. You see... Uh, we run the race of life, and we suffer greatly. We're suffering now in our country, but it's no excuse to stop because God has given the faith to keep on going. You've heard that old question when we come to a crossroads in life or to a situation that we just don't really know. We need to stop and ask ourselves the question, what would Jesus do? That's, that's what it means by faith. That's what it means that he's our example. Let him be our example. He's our all-sufficient Savior. We need nothing else. We need to look to him daily for our faith. Open up your Bibles, read it, and begin to walk it and live it in your life. Faith. Jesus is our example for brotherly love. For brotherly love. In Ephesians 5, 2, and it says, And walk in love, as Christ also have loved us, and have given for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. Walk in love. Now, most of you this morning will say, I love God, I love God, but it goes deeper than that because, you see, God says that we have to love our brethren and sisters in Christ. Now, we don't like that most of the time, but let me read you some verses, and the Bible is loaded with verses about loving your brother. In 1 John 2.11, now listen to this, it's powerful, but he that hateth his brother is in darkness. Ouch. And it gets worse. And walketh in darkness, whew, and knoweth not whether he goeth, 
because the darkness have blinded his eyes. Oh, wow, when we have hate for our brother or sister, man, it just cuts our connection with Christ right off. We need to have brotherly love. 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. And by the way, when we get back together, I want to start a, a, a study in the book of 1 John. 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. I believe that's our last uh, warning, our last uh, hurrah, the uh, last calling. God wants us to get ready. 1 John 3, 15. Whosoever hateth his brother, listen to this, is a murderer. Wow. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Wow. Be careful. Be careful. 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he's a liar. Now, I didn't say that. Don't come see me. But if you tell me you love God and you hate me or you hate the pastor, you're a liar based upon the word of God. 1 John 4, 20. He is a liar, for he hath loved not his brother whom he hath seen. How can he love God whom he hath not seen? I won't tell you. We need to make God our example for our faith. Fix our eyes upon him. We need to be uh, loving to our brothers in Christ. Not only for that, we need to follow Christ for purity. 1 John chapter 3, And every man that hath this hope in him is purifieth himself, even he is pure. If we take this word of God and we read it and we live it, it will keep us pure with him that we can walk with him, that when our pr we give uh, answer or pray, our prayers are answered. Purity. That's why he gave us 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's a daily operation. I don't know. Please don't tell me that you don't sin. Uh, I'm going to pray for you about that. Uh, I, I use 1 John 1, 9 quite often. I'm going to be honest with you, especially if I'm driving. But we need to keep our lives pure. Christ lived his entire life, 33 years, with purity, with purity. Not one time sinning. Wow. It's a hard job out there. We live in a sinful world. There's, there's distractions everywhere we turn. But we need to work at it. We need to make Christ our example. Not only for faith, for brotherly love, for purity, for suffering. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 says, For even a hereunto were ye called because Christ also suffered for us. I'm going to tell you, Christian, when you accepted Jesus Christ, you accepted suffering. If you've never suffered, you need to go back and check. Did you really mean it, mean it when you said, Lord, I'm a sinner, save me? You see, you're going to suffer as a Christian, some more than others. It's an intri intrinsic part. It, it, it is a uh, valued part of being a Christian. It's part of the Christian life. Uh, now, suffering uh, laughed at. I can remember when I was out of high school, I got saved in my senior year uh, of high school. Uh, I w went on to uh, community college and trying to witness there, and people just laughed. People just give you a wide berth when they see you coming. That, that's part of suffering. You lose friends, but I won't tell you God will give you better friends. But suffering, you can't let somebody de derail you because they laugh at you, they talk about you. Man, if I did that, I wouldn't have been here all these years. 
You need to let Christ be the example. Uh, look at all that he went through in his suffering. Uh, sickness, uh, they, they, they threatened to kill him. They tried to kill him. Uh, they they bad-mouthed him. You know, don't let that bother you. Just brush it off and keep on keeping on for Christ. For faith, for brotherly love, for purity, for suffering, and something at which I have learned a lot in the last few years, for patience. Hebrews 12, 3 says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be wearied and faint in your minds. They were always after him. He couldn't speak without them challenging him. I'm sure he was the son of God. He could have called 10,000 angels on the cross of Calvary and set himself free. By the way, one angel would have sufficed. But because of his great patience, because of his love and faith for the Father, because of his love for you and I, because of the purity that he had walked for 33 years, the suffering, his patience was enormous. On the cross, he said what? Father, forgive them for they know not what to do. We need to be like that when people talk about us, go against us, cause us trouble. We may, may stay away from them, but still love them for patience. We need to have patience. Who, 1 Peter 2.23 says, Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again, when they slapped him, he didn't draw back to hit anybody. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. He said, Father, you'll take care of this, and the Heavenly Father will take care of all those who abuse us in life, but we need to be patient. Patience is hard. Tribulation bringeth patience. And, and, and I don't. I never pray for patience because tribulation, you understand, bringeth patience. And we get that enough in life just by normal. But we need to be an example of Christ with patience. Not only for faith, for, for brotherly love. And I want you to get these down. That's why I'm repeating them. For purity, for suffering, for patience. But also in Philippians chapter 2, for self-sacrifice. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant. He was the Son of God, left the splendor of glory to take on the form of man and to suffer through it form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient even unto death in the garden the night before he said father I pray that this cup be passed from me but I like the next part but nevertheless thy will be done we, we have to take the punches sometimes and keep on keeping on for Christ. Now the pastor, I pray that it'll, it'll be a negative test, but God forbid that if it was positive, I'm gonna tell you now, the pastor is an example of Christ and he's not going to quit because he got a virus. My friend, life gives us some lemons sometimes and I like that old saying, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. You see, we need to humble ourselves. We need to self-empty of our pride and let Christ fill up the void in us and be like him, an example. And then this morning, told you it'd be short, the last in 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, he, <coughs> excuse me, he that saith he abideth in him ought to himself also to walk even as he walked 
we need to use Christ as an example for a walk. If we claim to know him, if we claim that we're a child of God, if we claim that we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we're bound. We're bound. You understand that? We're bound. We're bound to imitate him. That's why we call Christians Christ-like. We're to walk like him, to do our very best, to talk like him. In 1 John 3, verse 24, And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Listen, we need to have habitual fellowship with the Father. We need to habitually stay in the Word of God. We need to habitually pray each day, asking God to guide us and to give us wisdom and understanding in every situation. Christ is our motto. We need to follow him. We need to follow him for faith, for brotherly love, for purity, for suffering, for patience, for self-sacrifice, and for walk. Listen, I don't believe we have much time left before old Gabriel blows that trumpet. I believe he's wetting his lips. I think he's really raring to go. I think he keeps looking towards the throne, waiting for the signal from the Heavenly Father. Nothing has to happen. It's an any moment possibility. Don't be caught with your pants down, so to speak. Be an example for Christ every day. Every day, not just Sunday morning, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, to his honor, to his glory. Father, this morning I thank you for allowing me to stand and proclaim your word. But more than that, I pray that your word would go out and your spirit would use it, touch hearts, change lives for you. Lord, thank you for uh, Eastern Avenue. Thank you for our staff, for Brother Robbins for Brother Edgar, and we pray for our pastor as he's uh, quarantining himself till he's tested. Lord, I pray that the test to come back negative, that we'll be able to meet again next week. The seed line can start again. Lord, just be with our people, watch over them, keep us, and we'll thank you for what you're going to do in Christ's name. Amen.